Okay, our Windows Server 2008 machine that we just installed the Hyper-V roll on has rebooted twice. We let it sit for a few minutes and we're coming back to pick up where we left off. I'm doing this remotely only for screen capture purposes. Typically you would do the installation uh, from the machine itself. So I'm going to go to my remote desktop connection, same IP, 192.168.6.59. Type in my credentials. And if this is the first time you've logged into this machine after you installed the Hyper-V roll, it will actually come up with an acknowledgement and let you know that the Hyper-V installation was successful. And then you'll have to close the initial configuration tasks, and then that will pop up the server manager, and you can close that as well. So what we're interested in primarily is this new application here called the Hyper-V Manager. So we'll click that and open it. And the Hyper-V Manager can be run on another server, another machine on the network. You don't have to run it from on top of the actual Hyper-V machine itself. And in fact, if you're running Server Core, it's impossible to run Hyper-V Manager on the machine since it doesn't have a GUI. But you can do it remotely. Also, you want to look at your Virtual Network Manager before you start building machines. Right now, I've got a uh, NIC in there. I can add my own virtual network. If you don't do this before you create your virtual machine, that's okay, but when it comes to the point where you pick a, a network card, it's not going to let you do that. Your only choice is going to be not connected. So if you run through and you forget to do your virtual network manager first, that's okay. Just pick not connected, and you can come back after the fact and connect up the network card. So we'll hit OK. And now I'm going to create a new virtual machine. And these are the steps that it's going to follow some information about before you begin. We hit next. Give it a name. I like to give descriptive names to my machines, not just like, you know, server 1 or server 2. I'm going to call this SBS 2008 RTM. And instead of the default location of Program Data Microsoft Windows Hyper-V, I'm actually going to store it in a different location. I've got that dedicated drive. So if I go to Computer and then to my E drive where all my VPCs are, and then go to my VHDs folder, and I select that folder, it'll put it in VE called backslash VHDs. And you don't have to worry about that folder getting too muddy because it will create a subfolder underneath that that will contain uh, the information and it's going to pick it from this name here. Next, uh, it gives me a default of 512 megs of RAM. Um, actually, you can see my max is 6 gigs. If I did that, then I wouldn't have any RAM left for my uh, host operating system. SPS 2008 wants 4 gigs of RAM. I'm just going to cheat and give it 3500 because this is just a test machine. I really don't care how slow it is. Hit next. Now, there's my virtual networking. Again, if I hadn't set up my virtual network manager first, if I hit not connected, my only choice would be not connected even in the drop down. Um, unfortunately, I have a, uh, a NIC there. I'm going to leave it not connected just to show you how to set it up later on if you need to. Next. Now it's offering to create a new VHD file for me. It's going to put it in that same drive, the E drive, in the same subfolder, VHDs, and then that folder I told you it would create, the SPS 2008 RTM. It keys off that name. It's defaulting to 127 gigs. I'm just going to give it 60. That's the recommended minimum for SPS 2008 standard. Next. It's giving me the option now to uh, install an operating system and to point to a CD drive or a boot floppy. I'm going to skip this and show you how to do it later on because we're going to do a couple of the things with the configuration first. So I hit next. It gives us a recap screen. Machine name. Make sure everything is spelled correctly. Three and a half gigs of RAM. I haven't connected my network card yet. I did. Uh, it's going to create a VHD file for me and it will install the operating system later. If I had attached a CD-ROM drive, and I could hit this button and it would just launch and immediately start booting up. We want to do some configuration first. So hit finish and watch it create my VHD. There it goes. So here's my virtual machine. The state is turned off right now so it's not using any CPU. We're going to go in and take a look at the settings first. Now the settings on this that we're most concerned about, uh, the memory right now, that can be adjusted before you turn the machine on. If you change your mind and decide you want to go back to 4 gigs, you can. Under processors here, this is a Core 2 Duo so I could assign it two logical processors if I wanted to. I cannot exceed the number of physical processors on the machine. 
I can also do some resource control and balancing. My first hard drive on IDE controller 0 is uh, the VHD file. My second one, I have to have an operating system to install from, but instead of a physical CD, I'm going to use an image file over on an external USB drive. So I pick image file and browse. And we're going to go out to my little 320 gig external. And actually, it's not on that one. It's on this one. ISOs. I always make that mistake. And here is, if I mouse over it, Disk One Small Business Server 2008 Standard and Premium. So I click on that, and that's an ISO file. I hit open. So that's going to become my drive. And I also want to add one more drive. Um, the problem with Hyper-V, one of the problems with Hyper-V is that it doesn't work with USB devices. So if you were doing a physical install of SBS 2008, you would have a flash drive which would have your answer file and probably your, your EXE file on it. So if you look at my computer here, I have one of those little flash drives and I call mine SBS 08 answer. And on that disk I actually have the answer file itself that I've generated and I've got the executable. So the trick is how do you get this answer file into the virtual machine since it won't see USB drives and if you don't have the answer file there you're not going to get your extended options during install. Well what I've done, you see this VHD file here actually went onto another machine like a Windows XP or uh, Vista uh, virtual machine and I created a second VHD file, a small hard drive and formatted it. It's only 10 megs and into that when I was in the virtual machine I just copied these two files down in there and I carry this with me on a small flash drive, it's only a one gig flash drive but that way no matter if I'm doing a physical install of SBS 08 or doing a virtual one I have this virtual hard drive and I can actually attach that so that it can be seen when I do my install. So how I add that second hard drive is I click my controller I'm going to add a hard drive so I hit add and I just browse to where that VHD file is and it's actually on my little USB drive. It's right there. And I hit open. And then I hit apply. So now I have the memory I need. I have my one virtual processor, my hard drive, my DVD, and my answer file. Hit OK. Now all I have to do is right click and start that. And then I right click it and I hit connect. And it will let me actually connect to this drive. You'll see it'll spin up here in a second. It's loading the setup files. And after it's done here in a second, you'll see it'll come up with the actual installation itself, just like you were seeing in front of the machine. Because I'm remoted into this machine, I don't have the ability to uh, capture my keyboard and mouse. I can't remote into a machine and then go into a virtual machine from there. Uh, I would have to remote into this virtual machine by itself. But if I could click on it, I would just do next and continue with my installation the way I normally would. So that's all you have to do.